Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This will be a meeting of the Board of Directors, January 8, 1968, St. Joseph's. Heavenly Father, bless us as we gather here this afternoon. Bless our deliberations, unite us in our efforts, and guide us in our decisions as we strive to meet the obligations of our profession. <clears throat> may the new year be a blessed one for all here, and may our endeavors also be blessed by you for the coming year. These things we ask in your name. Amen. The minutes have been circulated to you. Uh, what is your wish regarding the minutes? Uh, Armstrong, I believe that I noticed that somebody, Murphy, was listed was on the committee of the nominations, and that needs to be changed. This was, uh, I think, the first was. impression, but it had to be changed later. I think it was changed on the ones in the book there, if y'all would like to uh, bring that to notice that. On the six. Six. Go back a little bit further. I think someone called us about that. Yeah. Tell us about that. To do that. themselves acceptable to the hospital so that we can work out so that they can work out and if we to um, a registry that is will be 
a functional registry, one that will will uh, serve the purpose of a registry. And I was real impressed with the work that they uh, are doing. I won't say anything more about the meeting because Mrs. Stedman, uh, perhaps, and maybe Ms. Honeycutt too, may have something else to say about that. I attended a meeting uh, called by Loretta Roberts. Um, it was under the heading of Community Council. I didn't know what it was all about and whether it was the same thing that we had a representative to or not, it didn't sound like it was, so I went to see what it was all about. And uh, it, it did stem from uh, Ms. Roberts and uh, a representative from the League for Nurses, representative from the District Nurses, uh, Fifth District Nurses Association and the Metropolitan Atlanta Hospital Council and the uh, Metropolitan Chapter of the American Red Cross and the director of the Refresher Training Program, Georgia State Nurses Association. And the purpose of this meeting was to really look to see if, they need, if there was a need for a group to really do some intensive uh, recruiting of inactive nurses. And although, you know, the state has this um, uh, training program, refresher training program, uh, it seems that from this meeting, not too many people were there. Uh, the Red Cross was there and I was there. The League was not there and uh, the tr uh, uh, director of the training program was there and it was felt that there needed to uh, be some work to see if we could find some more inactive nurses who could benefit and who would be interested in benefiting from this refresher training program. Um, I had hoped that there would be some notes for, from this meeting as to uh, actually what they did uh, following the meeting, but I guess Christmas and all that, uh, nothing has come through yet. I was, um, I almost felt that I was commanded to uh, go to another meeting. I got a call from work one day from Dr. Dowder's office said would you please be at a dinner meeting on such and such a night and I just this is all the information I had and I said well in what capacity am I supposed to be there because you know at work you don't know what you're getting called for but anyhow I went to this meeting and uh, It was regarding para the paramedical group, and again, a grant has been uh, gotten by the school. And Miss Lyons, L I N E S, not our Mrs. L Y O N S, uh, is working with this group and using this grant and the. Uh, the idea behind this is to really not just recruit for nurses, recruit in high schools, but really go below that and to sort of build up some feeling for the paramedical group by making them um, aware of the various uh, occupations in the paramedical field that are available and uh, making them aware of what these occupations uh, entail. Working with the counselor, and any of you who have been on the careers committee and have been in the schools and have uh, 
had contact with some of the counselors, uh, some of their attitude is if they're not, if they don't have good enough uh, scholastic averages for anything else, then they can go into nursing. Well, this is true, and I'm not just telling things. I've run into this myself. And um, so this group, who have already gotten the grant, uh, going to try to work with the counselors to make them aware of what is required, what is uh, to go into nursing, what the various nursing levels are, um, the uh, collegiate, the graduate nurse from the diploma school and so forth. And I think uh, it's going to be a very fine thing. And as I gathered this group there was kind of a, an advisory group. I wasn't the only one didn't know what we would be being uh, commanded to appear about. I heard several others say uh, they had the hospital association, uh, they had the uh, pharmaceutical association, they had uh, laboratory, uh, whatever their uh, group is. They had all of the paramedical, and they were pretty well represented at the meeting. So these are the things that um, I have attended and been able to go to since last we met. May I ask if she wouldn't call the roll now so we can establish a quorum and make it official? She had the black there on, on the yellow. I'm sorry, I just looked around and <laughs> I pink clipped this one. I thought perhaps you'd like part of it now. So we'll just yeah. official. Yeah. 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 Miss Margaret, I'm trying to get the roll. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Pauline English. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Merle K. Lott. Yeah. Yeah. Lott, no. Yeah. Miss Templeman, Mary Christian, yeah. uh, Sister Louis Mary Barrow, yeah. Miss Jacqueline E. Graves, Miss Annie Stanley, yeah. Miss Mary Gannon, yeah. Miss Grace Gold, yeah. Miss Hopper, Miss Cynthia Mallory, Miss Marilyn Rosenthal. Yeah. Miss Francis Busey, <laughs> Miss Busey, Buffy, my pronouncing wrong. Miss Elizabeth K. Lane, F. Lane, Miss Hanson, Miss Sarah Stedman, here. Miss Edith Honeycutt, here. Miss Edna Lee, sir. Miss Carolyn Hanson. This is the trace report for December 1967, and the balance brought forward from November was $634.60, and the receipts for the month were membership dues for $67.43.50, and membership dues for $68.87.25, and then we received a gift, uh, which was a grant for the registry of $5,000, and miscellaneous was $28.45, with a total of $5,159.20. And then we transferred uh, from the savings two hundred and thirty-four dollars and eighty-five cents, uh, which gave the uh, receipt six thousand twenty-eight dollars and sixty-five cents, and the disbursements for the rent sixty-three fifty, salary four fifty ninety-two, telephone fifty-nine seventy-two, printing forty-one seventy-two, mail and postage fifty-five, supplies and operational eighty-one thirty, miscellaneous fifty-six thirty-four. And then the nurses registry grant. What you do deposit that, Carolyn? That's five thousand right. dollars. <laughs> so uh, that was a total of five thousand eight hundred eight dollars and forty nine cents. And clear in the bank was two twenty dollars and sixteen cents. And on deposit at the Lampa Federal Savings, we have a thousand. Mm -hmm. 
I was trying to be in order here later. I wanted to make a motion uh, that probably you or someone else uh, be authorized to sign the checks. I'm the only one that really has the authorization now. And in the event that a check was needed, Carolyn really is very good about anticipating. And I'm usually here, but it's possible I would be out of town 10 days to two weeks at any given time during the year. And I think it's pretty bad for an organization not to have another person authorized. Mm -hmm. So we get an order now or later. Hold on just a minute. Uh, are there any questions regarding the oh, report? report? Hearing none, it's been filed for order. Um, may we have a report on the executive secretary? Well, it's I want to make mine brief. I'll tell you, we had 1157 members with eight associates. And as you know, we did not fill our quota. Uh, I've given you the little pack. one. What I'd rather spend my time on and very briefly tell you that uh, we have not, for the benefit of the others, had the instructions about our central billing. We wrote them again Thursday. We've called them twice. But for your benefit and everybody's benefit, it's my understanding that anyone who does not get the card from A and A We'll have to contact A and A directly. We do not have the computer, so it'll have to go to Mr. Chester Brewer, an A and A business manager in New York, at Ken Columbus Circle. Now you'll hear questions about the beige or the buff form. This is the form they merely sent us 300, which wouldn't, if I distributed, wouldn't give but 10 to any to about 30 installations, and we have at least 85 we distribute to. They have sent us a buff form, and I have written him to give me pertinent information for the simple reason that they printed up. A, he verified for me the little blue slip that I have sent out to all the hospitals. That's where that $41 came from, and offset printing. When I had this printed on November the 8th, I called him and read it to him, and Mr. Brewer did verify. He said it'll all go through 5th District, reinstatements, new members, and payroll deduction plan. Not one word was stated that the check should be made payable to the American Nurses Association. We assumed that it would just go as we've done before through the Georgia State Nurses and own. In fact, we signed four checks, you know, as we've done. So I guess uh, they have had their problems and all, and not one word was mentioned that the new member could come in with making three installments. And this card that they, we found in the office, and we finally found a letter that they posted on the 22nd of December, which looked almost like third-class mail, although it cost, it did go through the meter, you know, five cents. He tells us about this. He says, destroy all 1967 application forms. No word is mentioned about the 1968 application form, which we've distributed, 5,000 of them we've had. We, not all of them are out yet. We have a good many of them at Ponce Lynn with the membership chairman. Now, on this form, which the new one, the reinstated member, will use, or the, or no one who is a current member will use the beige form. They'll use the white one. If it has to be duplicated, done directly with A&A. The new member will use this one, but they do not tell us about this 1968 application form. And the reason I'm wondering about it is because on it, it tells you School of Nursing, which you would have to have for credentials and references. Nothing is mentioned on this card of those two. So as soon as we get a directive, we wrote him the full page letter Thursday, told him we needed it from the Stanley's committee this morning at 10 o'clock, and we've had no word about it. We have had only three communications about central billing. The first thing we got was a mimeograph little note here telling us about it from state headquarters. In the near future, we get notices. We had this, which I received Thursday due to the fact it came. It was posted on the 22nd. So uh, I verified the items that I sent to you with him over the telephone, and I mailed them to about 500 of these out to all the installations, which was our understanding that that was correct. So we'll have to find out whether the person makes the check payable to 5th District or makes it payable to A&E. We'll have to find out whether or not they use this buff card in addition to the 1968 application form. And according to this, they can go ahead and join right now and pay $14.91 and within uh, 
make free installments and that they will notify them, these new people. This is the letter, the two-page letter he states. And on this little form here, he didn't even tell us about that on the letter, but in this little form, and this I think I should read to you, uh, you know, we have full membership, the full dues, associate, which is reduced, and then the partial dues for the new graduate who must take it within six months after she's given her license in the state to practice nursing. Then uh, they can go ahead and say dues may be paid in three installments. The first accompanied this application form, this card right here. The second payment may be due at the end of three months of membership, and the third will be at the end of six. These are for these people who want to do it in three payments. They say they will not accept any kind of, this is what he tells you this, instructions for new members and old members state that their members may pay their dues in three installments. The amount of each installment is shown on the notice. This is the only installment plan that can be used, even though you may have had other plans. And then they ask us if we want to have questions. Now, uh, we know that the uh, payroll deductions go through the office. Reinstated members are treated just like a new member and have to be approved by the membership committee and will use the buck or beige card only. Direct members who are current members for 1967 will be directly from a and unless they come in through the payroll deduction. And as soon as I get something definite in writing, We'll take our one mail in and send out the little cards for your wallet, the little schedule cards. And another thing, they haven't told me whether I'm to put this on a form to send it to, to A&A. I have no form, no letter, no directive. And I don't know what to do about the nine that we got before Christmas and then four that we got this Christmas. So there's been much confusion and a great many telephone calls about it. However, we hope to get straightened out. And, uh, if you have anybody who did not receive that, I had five calls today. Tell them to write Mr. Chester Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, -E American Nurses Association. He's the business manager, and he's the only one. That office is the only one that can give a duplicate because we have, do not have the computer. And that's 10 Columbus Circle, New York. One of your members of your staff here didn't get her, or got it, and he has misplaced it. Mm -hmm. And we needed to give What's that to the you. area code. Oh, 119. And we, as she mentioned, we had the $200 for the benefit of those that didn't hear me earlier. That wasn't enough to take care of our current expenses due on the first. So we had to delve further into that little thousand, which means it, it would run us one month. And uh, we will have to hear from A&A &A and we'll all have to get to work, decide if we want a professional organization and do what we can to do to build it up and to make it financially sound. Ms. May said that they would try to plan some type of program that we could make a little extra that we could a little bit later on, but that she thought would all be brought to the attention of the group now that we're starting from scratch. Everything else is ready. The books are up to date as soon as I get them ready from the uh, auditors. And uh, we do have the nine that came in before Christmas, eight of them being Grady payroll deductions and we had four that came in during the holidays and for the first time since I've been in the office there was nothing in the box usually we have four or five thousand when you come back except the voucher for the registry deposit so uh, it's been a little different mm -hmm. <coughs> the Board of Standing Committee is not isn't here uh, but on the notice that came out uh, it told your meeting on January the 11th and what the uh, program was going to be. Um, Ms. Ler, I would like to say Ms. Lott has uh, really been working on this program and dates and people and things. We, it's been awfully hard to uh, pull them together. We did try to have a special theme and and we had some good ideas, or she had some good ideas, maybe did. But uh, getting people to do what we'd like for them to do uh, is sometimes hard. I feel like we will enjoy this uh, meeting that's coming up Thursday. The dinner was well received by the membership, in case you were interested. We've had many favorable comments. Particularly to get a present there. The 
thank you. We haven't had anything except getting the cards which have not been delivered that should be within the next day. So. Uh, Catherine Pope is uh, not here on bylaws. Is anybody here on bylaws? Oh, I, they have not been. Uh, I have not had a notice that they uh, have yeah, been. Yeah. They did have me. Are you on? Uh, no, the girl smart was on by one. So did she know? Was it? Um, Yes, so she's not on the fifty. Right. Right. Legislative <laughs> and the committee had one specific day. I would have had a committee to go. Uh, but I feel sure that they will be working because we do have to do something about our bylaws. And the finance, uh, Ms. Mason is here. Uh, she has to even relay that part to you about the fact that we needed your help to really get be planning and helping us to think of something that we could do to replace our depleted savings. Legislation, Ms. Uh, Lane, I was not able to attend this meeting either. I wanted to, but I couldn't get there at that time. Anybody know anything? Uh, membership and credentials, Ms. Dorothy Wood. I believe they have a meeting coming up. They just had oh, one. Oh, you just had it this And Ms. Stanley, well, this was Ms. Stanley's meeting in Grady this morning, but Ms. Stanley was at the meeting in December the 13th. And you do have all uh, for, you might as well go ahead and take care of it now. We do have some that they approved at that time. And as a matter of conforming to the bylaws, they were last year's members, 1967. Credentials were all passed and they're recommended for your approval. So uh, uh, it may be well that they go ahead and do it at this time. Do you have it? Uh, these are the members that will report it on the last report that the Credentials Committee approved and reinstated. Each of you have this list, and um, if there are no questions about any individual person or persons, uh, may we treat them as a whole? Would this be satisfactory with you? May we approve the list? No objections, and uh, what is your pleasure regarding this? I move that we uh, approve of these applicants for membership to the 5th District of State Nurse Association. And moved and seconded that we approve <coughs> the list that's submitted to us uh, of applicants for membership. All those in favor, please say aye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. These came in after the approved. Uh, Any other nominations shall affect since you would not have a report at this time. I'll register Ms. Honeycutt. Mm -hmm. Reg committee met November 30th, 1967 at St. Joseph's Infirmary School of Nursing. Ms. Louise Barong, private view representative from the advisory committee, met with the group. No business could be conducted because there wasn't a quorum. However, it was agreed to proceed with discussion in the event the funds were available to carry on the registry. Those present agreed that we should keep the same registrars until a decision is reached concerning the future of the registry. If you remember, in the last minute, it said, <coughs> In the order of business, the board was to appoint a director of registry and assistance. It was decided to defer this until the grant is confirmed. Well, it still doesn't make sense to appoint registrars when we don't know whether or not we're going to have a 
register beyond April because that's as far as the grant will take us. Operating uh, 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. So it would be impossible really to appoint registrars at this time uh, because uh, we would be in the same position we were in last time. We'd be liable for their salaries for the whole year and so we could just go along uh, as we are until we know what we're going to do. The possibility of combining the registry and district office was discussed um, in lieu of uh, the shortage of money in both areas. Um, also the possibility of going to an eight-hour service during the day with answering service for evening and night to stretch the funds out for a whole year. Um, many, and I'll interrupt this to say that I have had many telephone calls from nurses who, uh, who don't want to pay dues because they, they don't want to buy something that might not be. But if they had the assurance that there would be some kind of registry, uh, they would be willing to go ahead and pay dues. Uh, so uh, this is why this was discussed. Ms. Wise agreed to serve as chairman of the Rules Committee. Ms. Vaughn left on her vacation December 15th and a month's leave of absence during January to aid her sister's recovery from a long illness. A referendum vote was sent out to registry committee members and there were only seven returned out of a possible 10. There were six approvals and one disapproval for Ms. Vaughn's request take her vacation and be granted a leave of absence. Also, a referendum was taken concerning sending out bills in December to registrants as follows. There were three uh, things that could be checked. That bills be sent out to all possible registrants in December with cover letter explaining criteria for membership. Five approved of this. Two, that bills be sent to current registrants. No, no one voted for this. Number three, the bills be sent out only to those whose records show they meet criteria for memberships. Two uh, voted for this. Since there wasn't a majority vote, the bills were sent out as usual to current members. A check for $5,000 was received. Yeah, I went, this is one I saw in the one I saw on the 5th of December. Well, this, this is the last one from the registry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a portion of a letter here that you might want to hear too. It tells a little bit more of what's been going on. Uh, There's two meetings of recent date have been most encouraging and indications are that all problems may be solved during the coming year. The private duty section met on December 7th and the chairman of the advisory committee, Ms. Ann Lou Overton, met yesterday with the private duty nurses at St. Joseph's Infirmary. Plans for workshops, new rules and regulations and criteria are underway. And Ms. Overton stated that the advisory committee would bring together directors of nursing service to assist in the new program. This is just a portion of a letter that was written thanking uh, the donor for the gift, 5,000.
Well, uh, that almost could uh, uh, be a report from the very next person, a report of the advisory committee to the registry. Uh, uh, public relations, Karen Hale. Well, we've conducted it for her, members of her committee, Ms. Rosa Davis. We went to WSB with our singer that was here, and we feel that we had some very, very wonderful response, both in the newspapers and uh, from television, media, radio people. Thank you. Special publication, Charity Brown, I send that in, and we haven't had any for this year. <laughs> so far, well, we got a check for $92 for the uh, uh, 104 that went in last year. We get 50 cents for each for the, uh, the new director to AMA. I noticed uh, the next uh, section of our agenda has to do with special committees. There are no uh, chairman present. Uh, if any of you here have anything on this, we'd be glad to hear on any of these we'd be glad to hear from you at this time. Anybody? If not, we'll go on to the next uh, part of our agenda. This report of section of uh, administrators, Marilyn Rosecrans is here. We um, met in December and had we got excellent attendance. About a hundred people came for a dinner meeting, and we had, I couldn't remember her name, sister had to help me. Dr. Straub was here from Catholic University conducting the in-service workshop for the League, and she was gracious enough to come and speak to us on trends in in-service education, which was very good. And the bell ringers came as our entertainment, so we thought we had a nice meeting. We meet again in February, and Dr. Al Gilbert from Georgia State Hospital Administration School is going to talk to us on personnel administration. We have had one executive committee meeting and uh, plan another one the 17th of this month. Thank you. That's wonderful here. A meeting with about 100 people attending. This is it's real fine. Um, and Ms. Fedman from Private Duty. Yes, and we had our meeting the 7th of December, and uh, we had a real good meeting, and everybody seemed to want to start the register again, so you were attended, and, uh, and it pleased everybody that you came. It just made a real good impression on, on all the members that were there. <laughs> They talked about how much they liked you. And they felt people were interested. Uh huh. Interested in them. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope they will get this uh, feeling because we are. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when they you get won't. personally involved in this business, private duty, you really know how important and how much we need them. Well, they we feel like we want to do really do something for ourselves, you know. Madam Chairman, for the general duty, I brought these from Miss Bussey, thinking she might like to pass them around to you. I ran them off this morning. They did have a meeting, and I thought if the members here knew the new elected people in the general duty section, it would be well so we could give them that support. May I sure. distribute them uh, to you? General duty, too, is having a hard time yeah. getting going. Um, so this is what I thought perhaps if you knew who the new officers were that you could go ahead and, and I'm sure that she would like for us to do that because she asked me to notify the new ones and I sent them the bylaws and they will be having a meeting soon and I think since this section is our potential that the more that you know and the people that are working whether they're on your staff or not that Ms. Bush would appreciate us doing it. EACT, Ms. Mallory is not here, and I have not heard from her. I, a, other than a card, that they postponed they their meeting until uh, February. So, and uh, Mrs. Langford.
but usually comes in by this time, but she hasn't. And Ms. Hanson is not here. We public health do not have a meeting in December. I assume they will have one. We will have one in uh, February. We come now to the matter of unfinished business and um, I think that we need to make some or uh, take some stand about uh, the appointment of the registrars, although we recognize the fact that we don't know what the situation would be, but um, I wonder if you would want to uh, make any statement or any motion or any uh, thing regarding registrars for the period that we know about. What about temporary appointments? Well, it would be temporary mm -hmm. if, uh, for the I period. mean the word temporary put in and then what well, would be covered. What is your wish? First of all, do you do you want to uh, make some temporary appointments. Do you want to take any action at all? They are serving and they've only been appointed for when? Through November is the November. time for appointment. Mm -hmm. And they're still serving. So what do you, you have want to do? That they continue to serve until death is arrangement to leave. There's no one going to speak up on this. May I? Yes, yes. Do. No, it may be more, uh, that you should look at your bylaws that you have let this go by because simply of not knowing about the money. But it is your responsibility. So you're going to have to take it one way or the other. You can't get around that. <laughs> and you'll have to say it's temporary. Okay. Our bylaws that we are operating under, the Board of Directors shall provide for the maintenance of a nurse's professional register and nursing bureaus. At the meeting of the Board of Directors following the annual meeting, Board of Directors shall appoint a registry committee at the Board of Directors meeting preceding the November meeting of this association. Board of Directors, directors shall appoint a director of registries and her assistant or assistants, all of whom shall be members of the association on recommendation of the registry committee. On the recommendation, who they recommended the same ones. That's all we have. Well, why don't we just? Uh, I'll move that we accept people on a temporary basis. That's all we can do. I'm second. Um, been moved and seconded that we uh, appoint the registrar, same assistant registrar, same re registrar on a temporary basis. Is this discussion? I think you started to say something else. We had, I was trying to find a motion about um, that was in, injected as a, you see, there was a motion on the floor and then there was a, a substitute motion. I don't know whether it was last time or the time before about um, uh, if we didn't have enough funds to go to eight hour duty, I mean eight hour, one eight hour shift with answering service, but that was for this last year, 67. And I'm wondering if we don't need such a, a, a motion so that we can have it, uh, so that if we don't have enough money, that we can go ahead and before all this 5,000 is spent, uh, 
go on to eight hour service if we don't have the need uh, to have a register for the full year. Uh, it seems kind of foolish to keep somebody up there eight hours to, to fill two calls. Sometimes it's that way. And uh, sometimes it's nine o'clock before the first call comes in. It seems kind of stupid to have somebody do that. No, sir. Uh, on the floor. Ms. English has made a motion. I move that the same. Wait a minute, if I read this, we'll have to vote on it. Uh, well, you have to read that the I know it, but I, I, all I wanted to do right now was inform <laughs> what Ms. English's motion was, and I wondered if uh, what we were just talking about is would prohibit us from acting on the motion that Ms. English has before us. No. As I see it, she's saying something temporary so that we will fulfill our, uh, what is stated in the bylaws. And then we need to get back to what you're talking about. Well, Madam Chairman, that grant was obtained with the full understanding that the present setup from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock would be maintained. So for the grant on that, you couldn't still. Miss Ackie, do you really think that the donor would object to us holding on to our register at all costs? I'm, I'm, I don't. Not, I'm not thinking, but I'm just telling you that I think that could be changed. The, uh, the grant was gotten under that condition that the 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. Uh, prevail. So I think before any changes were made or any reduction in, in uh, personnel, that you would have to make a final decision there that it was to carry us on that schedule until April 1. Well, um, that would be pertinent to the registrars you want to appoint now to continue on a temporary basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. These people have to uh, stay on a temporary basis no matter where they work, what hours they work. We've got to have them. We can have a discussion on the motion that we have before us. Do you want to read the motion? Uh, or is this what you are? Bypassing, really. uh, it's my understanding that if I state the motion, then there's no further yeah, discussion that, that we have to vote. <laughs> you don't have to vote on the fire read. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, this is all I said. I move that the same registrar and assistant registrar be appointed to serve on a temporary basis. That's all. If y'all want to change it, it's all right. I don't care. <laughs> no. Um, is there further discussion about the motion that is on the floor? The motion before you then by Pauline Ning is seconded by Marilyn Rose Clancy that I move that the same registrar and assistant registrars now serving be appointed to serve on a temporary basis. All those in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So carried. Now then, to go back to uh, what you were talking about. And I think Ms. Uh, I mean, we got some money, but I forgot enough to run out of here. No, but this has already been adopted. So the only thing that comes up actually is um, if this ain't just the one to move to have one registrar. This was the board did vote for this. And for the remainder of this year, they were 
everything on Facebook. Everything. 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 Ever
you know, I think this January to April to me is no, a the testing ones that period. Are, uh, the ones that are paying are not free riders by no, any means. No, they but already pay. Uh -huh. These few people cannot support the registry. So this puts 5th District in a position that they are having to support something they don't have the money to support it with. Well, I think what Carol was saying, though, we ought to know, we tried last year, true, but we ought to know between January and April whether they're going to be interested in that because they're reactivating this advisory committee and the private duty people seem to be taking more interest in wanting to do something with the registry. This is the feeling I'm getting. And then by April, if they haven't, I think we did close the doors, but I think this is a testing period. But right the now. Hospital, if the hospital would, would use the register, then the private duties would, would be members of it. Well, they're trying that again, aren't they, uh -huh. between January and April to see if they will, and if well, they I don't, so. I think that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they are doing more than we did last year to try yeah, to they see. Because to be more if I that was the only way they could get work by, by mm -hmm. being a member of the registry, mm -hmm. then they would join. Well, all I'm trying to say is, and I know yeah, that I, because don't. I helped to get mm -hmm. the grant, and I know that the grant was given that we would have the services. I think the grant's wonderful. I think the way it's being used is all right, but I just don't see this thing. Keep on begging for keep a grant. Right. Well, they won't. Right. After the April the 1st, it'll be final. It will be final. If you want it, all right. If you don't, want it, then make other plans. I mean, in other words, very definitely, unless the uh, private duty nurses support it, or unless the hospital support it, uh, there would be no mean, no reason for subsistence. Well, it's my understanding uh, that some of the hospitals say that they will use it if it, we organize a well-run register. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Well, they'll have to try and well-run We need to take mm -hmm. any action at this time because there are too many ifs. Yeah. No. Yeah. And we really couldn't do anything, uh, as I see it, at this time, other than talk about it. Uh, maybe by March, we will have a report again of the registry committee and the section. And we may and have a forum. Advisory time. committee, and maybe in March, it may seem that it's uh, necessary that we take some kind of action. Mm -hmm. Would this be agreeable to you that we do nothing more than, if you want to talk about it some more, that's all right, but uh, but take no action. The only thing I'd like to do is by the bylaws. Yeah. Well, we've done that. Yeah. Yeah. We've taken care of that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd like to see in the report, we used to get a report of the number of calls. If we could get a breakdown from the 7 to 3 and the 3 to 11, you know, between now and March, and to see how the registry is being used. And I'll get it. And by whom? What I'll get it. Would you get it? Because yeah. I think our hospital, one of the busiest times is in the <coughs> evening. I think it's worse in the day, but we get some real, a lot of evening calls to the registry for evening and night nurses. And, uh, people that come in like in the middle of the afternoon that want them desperately. So I'd like, you know, if we could get a breakdown of that, it would be uh, helpful in making that decision. The thing that I'm I'm interested in is is uh, uh, about the time element. Is that that I have been told that not many calls come in from about seven to nine, mm -hmm. and if we're going to have a well-run registry, mm -hmm. the head registrar will have to have time to interview registrants and check them out right. and mm -hmm. and do some things that we haven't done that should have been done, yes. and that to me. It seems that there could be a, a, a time when perhaps two people would need to be up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm saying that maybe we could change the hours to more appropriate yeah. hours to fill the needs of the community. Well, I think this is something we should look into. I think this whole survey will help us though. Well, let me tell you, if I may, I may have one word. Trying to do eight hour duty, one person could not hold that register down and answer the telephone calls process all the dues and make all the assignments. I know no one else in the whole city of Atlanta knows any more than I do, and if we put it on a telephone answering service, a token service, then uh, it may create more negative than good if, if we're going to reduce it to that point. Are you talking about something that the, the register committee, uh, some of those points? I don't think that was their idea. No. I'm to them. I think their idea was to have a combination office to cut down overhead, but perhaps, and I don't think really you went any further than what you talked That's about, fine. but maybe having uh, a nurse and maybe having clerical 
Paul, you do an awful lot of clerical oh, stuff, yeah. and, and maybe we, maybe I we need clerical. I think your counts could be used better well, than I, they I used, don't, too. I don't think that was one person doing it all. Well, when you're getting to combine the offices, that's an entirely different story from what we're talking about, the Register and Anson Service. When we get ready to combine the office in the first place, the 5th District has a lease until next September. So you'd have to have to do something about that. And secondly, you're going to have to bring in the point of having enough money that they be separate mm -hmm. because take you could not take the mimeograph and the addressograph uh, with the other. Mm -hmm. I, so I really think it would take a lot of I think yeah. that uh, I think I'm that talking too much to Cameron, like that. I realize that, I but I think that a whole study would have to be done on this long 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 long. any kind of recommendation to that effect. I understand it's mandatory about the levels of nursing. And that a register is necessary for that, for the level of nurse, and it goes hand in hand. Now, do you want to talk any more? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we just wait and have the advisory committee yeah. tell us what they come mm -hmm. up with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is everybody happy with that? Uh, uh, is there any other unfinished business? Uh, sister brought up uh, having somebody else who could sign the checks in the event uh, that the uh, treasurer might not be available and money was needed. Miss um, Lewis points out that um, this would take a change in the bylaws. Does it say treasurer's the only one is going to take the bylaws? All of them. You want to refer it to the bylaws? Yeah, committee? I would like to refer it because I don't think it's good business. Don't you think it'd be good, Miss? I think in the event of an emergency. In an emergency, Carolyn really does look ahead, but you know, when the Carolyn might get sick and when I might be out of town, and you know, it's just bad business. That's mm -hmm. why I'll refer it to bylaws. Too. Mm -hmm. Does that take a motion from this board to refer it to bylaws? Can an individual or want a motion? I think it comes from the board. The committee would have to do something. I believe you should let the bylaw committee think about that because at some time you could get a president and secretary in cahoots to um, sign vouchers and so forth. Not with Carolyn around. We already signed the vouchers. Two people already signed I know, I know, but I mean, suppose uh, you get a president and a secretary, you see, that uh, like each other and we'll get this. You, you all haven't been around some place. You haven't been around the same way to this committee Now, the president and the, I mean, the uh, executive secretary and the secretary are bonded by virtue of their office. Uh -huh. uh, this is quite inherent. This other person, whether or not you want that bond, it has to be a blanket bond to cover anyone. Money when I came back from all these new ones. And then I got back and found out he wouldn't have a box full. We couldn't catch one. Then we found out whether I could go right on in there. And what to do about that? Nine, we've already deposited, you know, we had to use. Yeah, man, I assume you probably had that. I wrote him Thursday and told him I need to. For 10 o'clock this morning for Miss Stanley's meeting, I went to Southern Florida. I started over at Grady at 9 20. I was asked even earlier than 7 20 this morning. I started the grade at 9.20, and then I realized I had a few extra minutes, and I went to seven floors trying to find the postman to get that letter. I'm glad now I didn't spend any further time, because I got the grade at 10 minutes to 10, the meeting, uh, we still don't have the letter. And I told him, and, and sent it to Amiel Thursday, because we needed it by 10 o'clock Monday. Yeah, I move that the following be referred to the bylaws committee that besides the treasurer, the president, or another officer be authorized to sign checks for this district And then they don't have to take checks. Could I have another thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll second it. Please do. I'll second it. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other business? I don't mind signing the checks. Do it, Carolyn. If that, I mean, if I'm not available, but I've often thought about what would happen. It's been moved and seconded that there, there be 
uh, in essence, someone else who can sign checks, and that this matter be referred to the bylaws committee uh, in discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Will be referred to the bylaws committee. Now, I have no further business or matters to be brought up. Yes, I do. Let's go. Oh, excuse me. Did I leave some? Try to do the section. Excuse me. Did you see that in your report? Ma'am. Did I miss something? She said you know, before I you opened the meeting up that she had something. I don't think you heard of oh, before you opened the meeting. I don't think I did, did I? Oh, yes, I did. Before you opened <laughs> yes, the meeting. I, I thought there wasn't going to be a poll. Oh, this is, is from the private duty section, 5th District. Uh, I move that the A and A be asked to send a field representative to help set up levels of nursing. 